He continues, the ego cannot teach you anything as long as your will is free because you will not listen to it. It is not your free will to be imprisoned because your will is free. That is why the ego is the denial of free will. It is never God who coerces you because he shares his will with you. His voice teaches only in accordance with his will. But that is not the Holy Spirit's lesson because that is what you are. The lesson is that your will and God's cannot be out of accord because they are one. This is the undoing of everything the ego tries to teach. It is not then the only direction of the curriculum that must be unconflicted, but also the content. The ego denies our free will by denying the mind its ability to choose. Seeking to bring God and his Holy Spirit into its dream, the ego makes them into its own image and likeness, causing us to perceive them as coercive, demanding, and punitive. Yet their lesson could not be simpler. Separation is illusion, oneness, truth. Remembering that these are only thoughts in the decision-making mind restores to our awareness the realization of the true problem, the mind, not the world, and the freedom to choose God's will instead of the ego's errant wishes. In this way, the seeming conflict between truth and illusion is gently resolved by bringing both the curriculum and the mind's content into unity. The single purpose of awakening from the dream and returning to the home we never left. The ego tries to teach that you want to oppose God's will. This unnatural lesson cannot be learned and the attempt to learn it is a violation of your own freedom, making you afraid of your will because it is free. The Holy Spirit opposes any imprisoning of the will of the Son of God, knowing that the will of the Son is the Father's. The ego fears our choosing truth which would indeed make us free. To forestall the inevitable, the ego keeps us imprisoned in its thought system of guilt and projection, special love and special hate. Nevertheless, at some point we recognize the insanity of the belief that judgment will bring us peace, and we choose the happy and liberating thought of atonement. The curriculum of the atonement is the opposite of the curriculum you have established for yourself, but so is its outcome. If the outcome of yours has made you unhappy and if you want a different one, a change in the curriculum is obviously necessary. The first change to be introduced is a change in direction. A meaningful curriculum cannot be inconsistent. If it is planned by two teachers, each believing in, a diametrically, in diametrically opposed ideas, it cannot be integrated. We cannot simultaneously have Jesus and the ego as our teachers, for they represent mutually exclusive thought systems. The ego's world, however, is ingenious in having us combine the two by confusing form and content, cause and effect, obfuscating both. Jesus, therefore, cautions us not to go in opposite directions concurrently, in effect saying to us, Do not ask me to help you in the world or fix things here. I cannot do that. The ego's Jesus has us believe he can, that it is important to change the form and ignore the content. In A Course in Miracles, Jesus helps us realize that his and the ego's thought systems are opposite in all respects. We cannot follow both. It is one or the other, the right-minded application of this principle. Remember that the ego's fear is that if we take Jesus' hand and learn from him, it and its thought system of separation and hate will disappear. 
In light of this, the ego cleverly invites Jesus into its thought system, which is what Christianity and all formal religions have done with its teachers. Unfortunately, this has been the case with students of a course as well. Bringing spirit into matter and intertwining them must lead to learning failure, for integrating diametrically opposed ideas is impossible. Only by recognizing that denial of our identity as spirit is the source of all unhappiness can we return to the decision-making mind that is the cause of the effect that is our conflicted and miserable state. If it is carried out by these two teachers simultaneously, each one merely interferes with the other. This leads to fluctuation, but not to change. The volatile have no direction. They cannot choose one because they cannot relinquish the other, even if it does not exist. Their conflicted curriculum teaches them that all directions exist and gives them no rationale for choice. We are indeed a volatile species because the ego is born of volatility. The belief we destroyed God, who now will return the favor. As a way of staving off our certain demise, we attempt to bring him into our thought system, with the mind going back and forth between truth and illusion. This maladaptive and magical thinking engenders even more anxiety, since the ego has led us to believe that this wrathful God, now present in our lives, demands suffering and sacrifice as atonement for sin, leaving us no true choice for freedom.